happening out there, YouTube land? It's Nathan here with Portside Rustics. So, I've got, this is uh, video number three of six part series. Um, I might go more than that. But right now it's still six. Uh, the baby food jar. The baby food jar. So, I've already done the mica with mixed with epoxy. I've done two different dry mica methods from the last video. This one we're going to do alcohol links. And I'm going to do three methods of alcohol links. I'm going to use a white base coat on both of them. Um, then, actually on all three of them. Sorry, I got three of them. And then, I'm going to, on one of them, do the saran wrap method. We take alcohol ink and drop it all on the saran wrap, wrap it around, let it dry up the next morning. The other one, I am going to paint, brush paint on alcohol inks. Now, mind you, I only have three alcohol inks. I have an orange, I have a yellow, and I have a purple. So we'll see what I can do with that. Um, and the third one is just doing drops of alcohol ink in some uh, flood coat over the top. So let's get these things sprayed up. Now I use, probably what a lot of people use, closer. At least for the white, that's just what I'm using. Let's ship up here. Hold it behind me. So we're going one at a time. Driving against traffic. On my side. It's the first decent day we've had in a long time, so I figured I'd get a lot of my outdoor things done. Let's I'm actually a fan of the Rust Oleum brand over Krylon. The pylon for the white is what I have, so that's what we're using. So there's the first coat. Um, come back and we'll throw a second coat on, and this is dry. So let these dry and come back. We'll take one of them and We'll do the saran wrap alcohol method. Here we are now. <clears throat> They're all been painted. Now, I'm gonna let you know that what you saw me spraying in the last <clears throat> segment of the video was not these three jars. I've already actually done this segment once of doing the whole um, strain wrap method and brushing on the alcohol inks. <clears throat> the problem is when I went to go download everything and edit, I noticed I accidentally deleted the videos. So I'm not going to show you the jars yet that I already done. Them will be in the next segment when I actually epoxy them here a little later this evening. So you won't see these ones <clears throat> until probably tomorrow when I do the reveal of the jars that I'll be epoxying tonight. If that makes any sense. If not, I apologize. But I am really going to do this part of the video to show you the steps I went through when I did the jars before these ones. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, again, one jar is going to be done saran wrap method. Another jar is going to be done brushing it on as if you're trying to do a wood grain or something of that nature. And the third one will be have a flood coat. I haven't decided if I'm going to use a um, mica <clears throat> mixed in with the epoxy white for the base coat. Or if I'm just going to put the epoxy on and just let it go white. I'll probably do it that way only because the other one didn't have anything underneath on top of the base coat. So... Let's get started. <clears throat> we're gonna shake up. <clears throat> I probably should put on a pair of gloves, but we're gonna go for it. I need to clean my hands. I guess a little bit of a 
these caps leak or anything here because it looks like I might be splattering some purple. And so again, the colors we're using are sunshine yellow. And they are Ranger. I think that's Tim Holtz <clears throat> inks. Um, I am using Purple Twilight. I am using Sunset Orange. It's the only three colors I have for alcohol inks. <clears throat> I got them at Michael's. They came in a kit. I really wanted the cabin one or the teak to try to actually do the wood grain color, but <clears throat> we're going to go with these three. So we're going to set this one off to the side that's going to have the alcohol inks just dripped into the epoxy when it's on the turners. So I think we're going to start out with some yellow. I mean, sorry, <clears throat> purple. And we're going to drop it around. Oh, and I plan on sticking this straight down on, folding it all up onto it. A lot of people, they roll it. <clears throat> I'm going to pull up all the corners, smush it together. Okay, he's got some purple on there. This is sunset orange. Do a little bit of overlapping, fill in the spots. come up with some I think really cool ideas that I'm going to do for upcoming jars but let's set this well, let's get it kind of wrinkled crinkled maybe a little bit wrinkle crinkle is that a word Somebody let me know if that wrinkle crinkle is a word if it's not it is now what did I do pull it that way so let's get it up something like so. <clears throat> a great way to test it out if you don't want to take the chance on a whole big tumbler or anything. These jars are great. <clears throat> you see how they come out. You'll decide if you want to... Uh, do this technique on anything else big so <clears throat> for now we're going to set this off to the side to dry that will dry for well probably <clears throat> tomorrow morning so let's say what is it three o'clock ish now or so in the afternoon so yeah it'll definitely get 15 or so hours so I am going to start doing the brush method with some yellow sunshine. Putting a street. And then we're going to just brush. At the bottom. Probably should uh, take all my covers off. Make it easier to let's see. Orange. I'm going to use the same brush all the way around. As you can see what I've got going on. A little more purple, we'll say right here. Now, 
Once an old wise fortune cookie told me that never judge artwork by its defects. So I guess that goes along with like a Bob Ross thing of happy accidents. bottom just a little there throw a good chunk of purple now I've used these three alcohol inks on a tumbler that I uh have um, some cactus vinyl on because it looked like a deserty sunset stormy night it came out as. So I said I'm using the same brush, I haven't cleaned it, letting it mix if it's got to mix. Yeah, get it. See what we gotta do to the bottom. Maybe just put a little bit of that. Kind of going over it, it re-wets the, then you get some new design like, let's see, Just put a drop, looks like dyed wood, which is kind of cool when you think about it. I got all the way up around the rim. So yeah, this is pretty much kind of a take two on the video. There, kind of liking it. So, we got the saran wrap method. We got the brush on method. And then we'll have the drizzle on the epoxy method. Three ways to do an alcohol ink epoxy jar tumbler project so let me set up for some epoxy and we'll be back with you
Well, we're back and it's been 14 hours or so, 14, 15 hours since we did the two alcohol techniques before epoxy. One was with the saran wrap method. The other, brushing it on with a paintbrush. Don't know if it's exactly wood grainy, but I think it looks kind of cool. And the third one is going to get a flood coat, probably with some white mica in the flood coat, and then I'll use those. But so now I haven't unwrapped this yet, so I don't know what it looks like underneath. Um, so let's, it's completely dry. At least it looks it, maybe. Oh, uh, could be some wet spots. So we might just let it dry. That looks pretty funky. Bottom. So now that I have the saran wrap off from it, I'm gonna let it finish drying because I don't think it's completely dry. I think that's where there was some lettering and wording. Right there. Let's get a real good. So, is the bottom tacky? No. So, set that there. That should be okay. So now when we come back, we'll uh, I'll have my turner set up the mounted and we'll start applying epoxy and again this is a great way to test out different techniques if you're scared to try something you want to try it on a small scale little jars are excellent um somebody mentioned to me <clears throat> now i usually market these as little stash jars but somebody said even makeup brush jars um plant little flowers in it or something even if they're succulents that would look kind of cool, I guess. So there's other options. Um, let me get set up and we'll get playing with epoxy. Okay, we are set up. Tumblers are turning. <clears throat> epoxy is mixing. Um, I probably mixed up again a little much, but it's easier to measure out and mix a little more than not enough, so I can't picture each one of these taking more than 7 ml, 7 milliliters or so to coat, but I did a total of 30. I do have my little smiley faces that I can pour into. So again, these two <clears throat> are the original ones that I did the alcohol ink techniques to before I accidentally deleted the video. Um, I like how they came out. Now this one <clears throat> right here is the one that's gonna just have it dripped on. This one's just going to get a clear flood, clear flood. We'll decide what we want to do with it. If we want to put some sort of <clears throat> peekaboo type thing on it or a vinyl on it or just let it be and let it be. So, let's see. i to put a glove on. I think we are going to just flood coat the two far ones over here. Then I might adjust the camera a little more over this one and again sunshine yellow sunset orange purple twilight
And I'm probably not going to take me taking off the um, tape around the threads. <clears throat> That'll just be what it'll be. Again, I've been really liking these small jars to try out new techniques. I've got some unique ones, I think, coming here soon. I want to try something with coffee grounds, sawdust, and some other oddball ingredient, I guess, if you want to call it that. <clears throat> Maybe I'll try it with the herbs that everybody else does to try to make their golf cups or their cannabis cups. And so, so let's start out. Again, I'm using my fairly new Cimarron epoxy. I've liked it so far. Um, so, yeah. Let's see if I'll turn this a little bit this way. Get the bottom. Oh, and I did um, take these two downstairs and I put a, put a coat of Rust-Oleum clear coat on them just so I see people talk about the ink changing color when they do the wood grain thing so I don't want to take a chance so I have the clear coat why not just give it a quick spray There, that one. Again, I like doing the bottoms kind of first, make sure that they get some epoxy to them. Right around the bottom. And that should definitely give me enough to do a flood coat. Kind of a weird combination that they put together the well i guess morning noon and twilight or something like that, that they were probably figuring on so now that i got that on there let's throw the heat gun on them real quick on low stay kind of back so i'm gonna help get rid of the bubbles help heat it up to help it smooth out Okay, try not to get my arm in the epoxy. Okay, here's the one at a time now. Oh, looks like I got some. I got a, dry spots there. I think I got everything on that one. Oh yeah should be good to go <clears throat> so now this one we can just load on up and uh, yeah so we're loading up the epoxy here on the last jar and then we will start to give it some alcohol ink again I didn't use a colored base flood coat for the flood coat here 
I'm gonna have a little epoxy left over. But we will fill that into something. Let's put the heat gun. This one, some the bubble before we start. Camera maybe a little more towards this one. I shouldn't need a glove on anymore. Turn this this way. Come down a little bit more with it. Just trying to find the angle. Okay. I think we are going to start out with the lightest color first, which would be the sunshine yellow. Just get these good shake. Boom. Boom. Actually, I'm turning the opposite way than I like going. That's okay. Now I'll do some orange. some purple again I know they say to use white to help separate the colors but I don't have white so again we use what we got go back to using some yellow any the jars my arms almost got to it than any other color on here. Let's 
spots. There, we'll let that spin. Let's get it going the other way again. Get some movement the other way. Again, everything looks really nice and covered. What do I have left for? Yeah, I have maybe five MLs left. No, I got a good 10 to 15. I don't know, should I throw anything else in here? Let's see, sometimes you just gotta know when to leave it alone. That's only sometimes. It's not all the time. See what goes on with this. I'm liking it. So, tomorrow morning, I'll fill you in. Looks like I have a dry spot. Put epoxy right there. And maybe there. Kind of made it interesting. I think I'm going to get some up and down movement just to help. Might have to put some more alcohol inks. That was interesting. Now we'll dabble dab. See what happens. It's always happy accidents, never a mistake. And again, it's a small enough jar if I don't like it. I can either strip it or just, just leave it the way it is. Okay, see you buddy in about, oh, 12 hours or a little less. Here we are everyone with the three jars that I did alcohol links with three different techniques. They all have a clear coat or a coat of epoxy on them now. I did, of course, the white base coat, saran wrap method on this, white base coat, brushing alcohol inks on here, and then drizzling the alcohol inks on flood coat of epoxy here. Um, they all had the same colors used. As you can see, very three distinct different outcomes. 
So give it a try. Try taking three of the same inks, colors, do three different techniques and see what your outcome is. But uh, the next video probably is going to be another three jars. But I'm looking into probably either going to be working with yarn, um, embroidery floss, and probably fabric strips. Or it's going to be sawdust, coffee grounds, and probably herbs. So until then, stay safe. Have a good one.